So I'm going to invite you at the end of this time to ask God to help you to get into the middle of his wheel for your life, to put you in the middle. Mark Twain said this. He said lots of things, but he said this. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you find out why. And if you will get in the middle of the wheel, the potter's wheel, God's wheel, and allow him to shape and fashion you, the why will soon become obvious. James chapter 1, we're going to look at a few verses here. This is what it says. If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives, what's that word? Generously to all without approach, and it will be given him. Next verse, but let him ask in faith with no doubting. For the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea that is driven and tossed by the wind. I mean, where is that wave going to crash? Where is it going to end up? Well, it doesn't know. And this is the picture that James is painting here. And the next verse says this, for that person must not suppose that he or she will receive anything from the Lord. Why? Verse 8, it says, he is a double minded man unstable in all his ways and that's a picture again of the clay that's not in the middle the single point on that wheel when you're outside that place and you're sometimes trying to be in there and out there one foot here and one you'd imagine the clay if it had one foot in the middle and one foot out here this is god's will and this is outside god's will and the re- why would anyone want to have a foot outside of god's will Because it can be fun. It can be enjoyable. It can be exhilarating. It can meet a need in the short term. But you can imagine the person trying to straddle the middle and the outside and the wheel is spinning at a high rev. It's going to be very unstable. And that's what James is saying. The double-minded, the person who's not sure, is it this or is it this, is going to be unstable in all their ways. So I'm going to make a profound statement. You may want to write this down. Double-mindedness is the opposite of single-mindedness. Now... That's only half my comment so far. (laughs) Here comes the next half of this comment. Being single-minded is derived from having integrity. And that's because single-minded comes... It's single, one. And what does the word integer mean? Do we have any maths teachers here, Jeanette? Do you teach maths? What's an integer? A whole number. Not a bit over here, not a bit over here. A whole number. That's an integer. That word integrity comes from that word whole. Whole. A single unit. Whole. So when we say a single-minded person can only come from integrity. You have to have integrity. Now, I know for many of us... We hear the word integrity and because we hear it on the six o'clock news and because we usually hear it in relation to corruption or some other kind of dishonesty, we think integrity only means being honest. Well, that you're not a person of integrity is usually the insult someone will throw at us if they think we haven't been honest. And yes, honesty is a part of it, but that's only a small part of it. The big deal of the word integrity is wholeness, complete, single-mindedness. No wavering, single-mindedness. So so let me make this statement, and again, I thought it was quite profound. The person who lacks integrity is unbelievable. Now, I know that people use, you're unbelievable, As if it was a compliment. Please don't ever compliment me like that. I want to be believable, not unbelievable. I don't want people to say, I can't believe a thing you're saying, which is what unbelievable means. 
you know, Stephen, you're unbelievable. <laughs> Which is me saying, I cannot believe a thing you say. I'm a you're a fisherman. <laughs> then you really are unbelievable. <laughs> So a person who lacks integrity is unbelievable, and I don't think that's a compliment. The person of integrity is the only person who can be believable. Now, all this is just building up a bit of a, a foundation here. So in order to become a person of integrity, you've got to be whole. I, I did a presentation at a pastor's conference once on, Hawaiian, uh, on a particular Hawaiian Airlines flight um, where... In the door of the, the main uh, of door, there, there was one pop rivet. Now, if you know what a pop rivet is, it's like a nail that gets compressed. And, and as it gets compressed, the, the bit that's on the outside flattens out, so it holds it on that side of the wall. And the bit that gets pulled in, it gets flattened out on this side. And it, it, it ends up with a flat bit, a, a piece of naily bit, and another flat bit. And that's the pop rivet. It holds it there. And on this particular Hawaiian Islands flight, there was one pop rivet missing in the door. Just one. How much is a pop rivet? Went to Bunnings, how much? 50 cents? A few cents. It'd be a few cents. You're exactly right. Only be a few cents. Five cents, ten cents, maybe tops. Not a lot. And apparently some of the passengers, some of the passengers went in and noted, that's odd. There's a pop rivet missing. Ha, 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 ha and didn't think anything of it until as they set off from Honolulu without that one little pop rivet the plane was no longer whole it was only a little thing and the result was that as they took off and got altitude it caused a stress fracture in the doorway they created a crack and the cabin pressure inside and out ripped that crack open ripped off the ceiling and a stewardess was sucked out of the plane and never seen again. And the entire roof went off and all those who weren't wearing their seatbelts 